Want to make a video look like a million bucks? You don't need nearly that amount of money to do it. Just a few simple tips. Hello world, my name is Mike Ploger, my team is VizMe, and my topic today is making beginner videos look professional. More views equals more income, and while you may have an idea that could help millions and see a constant stream of viewers, are you sure you know how to produce a high quality video? You may have a million dollar idea, but you'll need to know some standard practices in video producing in order for your ideas to reach their full potential. That's what we're here for. Over the next several minutes, we'll give you 10 tips for creating video that will help increase views and trust, all while building your professionalism. Shall we? Before we get to technical tips, I want to harp on planning ahead. Hitting record and going off the cuff is a risky strategy that I don't recommend. You may miss something you meant to include or say something that's unnecessary and confusing. Start by setting a goal. What is it you're looking to achieve by producing this video? Don't just say more views. Are you looking to help others by providing useful tips like we are in this video? Or maybe you're looking to humor viewers and provide them with an escape. Maybe you're starting a review channel and want the world to know that you're an expert and you have an opinion on something. Whether you're promoting something, trying to drive people to your website, or even just vlogging about your life, try using a smart goal sheet like this one that we have here to help you stay organized and keep your objective front of mind. Next, you'll want to determine who your target audience is. You shouldn't just think that those who want to watch will watch it, but rather target a specific group of people and consider how they watch their content. What are your viewers searching for? Where are they looking for it? What do they need? This is another template that you can use and edit on visme.com right now that will allow you to see this clearly. Consider their age, gender, profession, interests, needs, wants, and more. By planning ahead and doing this up front, you'll receive more viewers later on. The next part of planning ahead is doing your research. One of my favorite channels on YouTube is Dad How Do I? A father of two decided to create a channel meant to help those seeking help with questions or problems that dads typically help with. His target audience is likely those without a father figure in their life or even those who just need help with typical household tasks. His research may come directly from his kids who ask him these questions, but I also imagine he researches how many others may be asking and exactly what the answer is. Your goal is to create video topics that fill content gaps and provide substantial value. Try typing your idea into the YouTube search bar and see what others are searching for and if there's already channels for it. Study those channels to see what you like and what you think you can do better. Once that's complete, it's time to consider the type of video that you want. And you can get fancy here if you'd like. Rather than just talk in front of the camera, have you considered animation or motion graphics? My guess is you probably haven't because you're a beginner, but that could be an option down the road. In the meantime, even considering a screen recording could be beneficial depending on your topic. Next, you'll want to write a script. It may not have to be word for word, but understanding the direction your video is going and having a reference sheet will be extremely helpful once it's time to actually record. You ensure you're hitting all your points and not missing anything by mistake. Creating a storyboard would also add another level of difficulty, but if you're working with a team as you begin video producing, it would help everyone understand your vision. And VizMe has the templates to help. And finally, the last step of the most boring tip in this video is considering the location. Where you record provides context to your video. You want what you're saying to match what the audience is seeing. We go with a green screen. Again, it may be a little too complex for when you're just starting out, but eventually graduating to this setup can help accomplish the look that you're going for. All right, enough of the planning already. Let's get into the practical tips that will immediately help make your videos look more professional. One of the first things that you'll want to do is purchase a high quality camera, but don't confuse this with buying an expensive camera. High quality cameras are everywhere nowadays. There's actually a good chance that there's one in your pocket right now. Yeah, I'm talking about smartphones. They can do the trick. In the past couple of years, smartphone camera technology has soared. Those little boxes can now record video in 4K at 60 frames per second. That's about as good as it gets. 
Just notice that I said about as good as it gets. Yeah, you could still purchase a professional camera like a DSLR to boost your camera's performance. With these, you get more control over color, zoom, stabilization, and just better overall performance. Ultimately, it comes down to what you're shooting for. A bulky DSLR may not be in the cards. Just wait for it. Do your research again and decide what fits your needs best. Our third tip can really be summed up in just three words. Create better lighting. You have two ways of doing this. The first is through natural light. This is great for beginners as it costs nothing at all but to plan around the time of day and weather. Yes, the weather. Cloudy days are the best days for natural light. They create a natural glow and won't cause people to squint from rays of sunlight. The other option is through studio light. This is obviously cause for an investment, but an investment worth making. You'll probably want some key lights, reflectors, and a softbox or shapers. More advanced than a beginner, but less than an expert would be a ring light. These are one of the most popular options for filming yourself from an iPhone. If you're going to take anything away from this video, maybe the most important is to not use your camera's built-in microphone for your audio. Get an external microphone. That may be a condenser microphone, like one you see in a recording studio, a dynamic microphone, which is your simple handheld mic you'll see field reporters have on the news, or a lav mic, which I'm actually wearing right now. They're tiny and easy to hide, but can still pick up wonderful audio. Just be sure to test your audio as you begin recording. Don't wait till the end to learn that a battery died or the microphone wasn't working. Trust me, I've been there. Now the most complex tip I have for you is to learn video editing software. To be frank, it's much easier said than done. People go to school for years to master it, but you can learn beginner editing tips online in little time at all. Video editing software will allow you to make clean transitions, adjust colors and lighting, add titles, incorporate music, and my goodness, just so much more. Some software you pay for and some is free. Visme has a free online video maker that can do the tricks I just mentioned. Make headlines move in a matter of seconds, add stock video footage, adjust colors and motion and more with just a few clicks. Is Visme the most advanced tool? No, but it's free and easy to use when software like Adobe Premiere and Apple's Final Cut are not. While lighting can immediately undermine the professionalism behind a video, shaky footage will do the exact same thing. I recommend finding a camera with a stabilization feature or some software has it as well to allow you to fix any problems in post-production. Just beware, it's not always perfect. Another option you should consider is a tripod or stabilizer. A tripod will help with pans and tilts and a stabilizer allows you to carry the camera around while maintaining stability. Properly framing your subjects is another important aspect to consider. A good place to start for beginners is with the 3x3 three three grid. Imagine your camera has a 3x3 three three grid over it. Your subject should be placed at one of the four intersecting points of that grid. Some cameras actually have this grid in their viewfinder to make it easy. Say you have a person talking on camera to you behind the camera. Place that person on the right intersecting points and you stand to the left of the camera facing the subject. This is one of the very first lessons that you'll learn in journalism school and you'll see it on the nightly news nearly every night. You can play around with the composition as much as you'd like. You'll want to try to not cut off details of your subject, but sometimes it may be necessary. Like if you're going for an extreme close-up of a subject's face, you'll want to cut off their forehead and not their chin. Just a small tip to helping your composition improve. If you're the subject on camera, you want to look as comfortable and as confident as possible. Take it from me. While the camera has basically become one of my best friends over the years, there was a time where I was stiff, monotone, wide-eyed, and quite frankly, awful. I'll admit it, but luckily I received excellent training and just got familiar with the position. There's some things that you can do today to help you start becoming more comfortable yourself. First, take a deep breath right before you record. Shake out your arms and legs too, and don't forget to blink. Work on speaking slower and practice enunciating. You may not be able to tell, but I actually talk really loud when on camera to help with not slurring any words. 
At the end of the day, treat the camera like it's a person. Try and be as loose as you can and you don't need to be perfect by any means. Just have fun with it and be yourself. All right, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. We don't just hit record and run through our entire video script in one take. Heck no. We chop up our videos into each point, making it easier to not only record, but also to edit. Listen, I'm not perfect, obviously. It can take me multiple tries to nail down what I'm trying to say before it actually comes out right. You don't wanna know how many bloopers that we have here, but my point is try breaking up your video to help you feel more at ease. I recommend trying to cover the cuts and footage with a graphic or overlying video so viewers won't notice the cuts. Those noticeable cuts are another easy way to make you look inexperienced. And my last tip is to remind you to promote your finished product. I've said this on this channel before and I'll say it again. You may have an idea that could change the world, but if you're not reaching anybody, the world remains as is. Push your video through social media channels, groups and forums, email marketing, paid advertising and more. Consider where your audience will see it and promote, promote, promote. And don't just share something once and call it quits. You have to follow up and push it two, three, four times for it to really grab your audience's attention. Consistency is key. Don't let up if you're not encouraged right away. As was said in the field of dreams, if you build it, they will come. But on that note, it is time for me to go. Take these tips and commit yourself to being a better video producer. I can guarantee you'll start to see results in your product and views nearly immediately. And if you create videos like this, always encourage your audience to like the video and subscribe to your channel. So don't forget to do that. Thank you all so much for continuing to watch our videos here on the VizMe channel. We love helping you and hearing your success stories, so please don't stop sharing. We'll catch you here next time. With VizMe, I'm Mike Ploger, helping you make information beautiful.